welcome you all my name is dr p j madam rafi today we are going to discuss angina pectoris that is chest pain so what is the major feature in angina pectoris is it is mainly the imbalance between oxygen supply and body demands okay there will be decrease oxygen supply to the body demands okay so what is the major symptom of angina is chest pain so classical feature what is the main pathology for this one chest pain is narrowing of coronary arteries blocking of coronary arteries leads to decreased blood supply to the tissue obviously they will generate pain that's why angina pectoris will have chest pain so there are three types of angina pectoris that is classical or stable angina crescendo or unstable angina variant or prince medial angina most common is stable angina that is most common type mostly patient will have pain during exercise or emotional uh, stimuli means when, when, whenever his patient is doing some exercise or some work obviously body needs more blood supply so heart is pumping blood so it need more oxygen more uh, pressure will be there so obviously patient will have more pain so that is classical unstable angina so when doing some physical activity patient will have pain that is stable angina crescendo unstable angina means it is also known as pre infarct angina so patient will have in this pre unstable angina patient will have recurrent attacks multiple episodes of chest pain will be complained main next one is angina with minimal exertion whether he is doing minimum previously he is doing for after 5 minutes is giving pain means now also with little walk also patient will develop pain that is with unstable angina that's the major difference stable angina means if you do physical activity we will get pain this is unstable means it is with minimal uh, during activities also patient will have pain okay so it is also known as pre infarctic angina next variant or prince medial angina this is known as this is due to vasospasm previously are stable and unstable this both are due to occlusion of arteries okay atheros occlusion in arteries will lead to cause stable unstable angina here variant and prince metal it is due to vas uh, coronary vascular spasm spasm of coronaries will lead to cause variant of prince metal angina that's why this is a major classical feature pain will be during at rest also patient will have okay so during rest and during sleep also patient is feeling pain means it is due to it may be variant of prince metal angina okay mainly due to vasospasm so what are the drugs we will see in following so what is the main treatment strategy for angina pectoris is here mainly is decrease oxygen requirement to the tissue or we can increase the blood supply to the ischemic region okay so how do you decrease oxygen requirement by decreasing its activity that means by decreasing heart rate heart contractions heart burden okay so thereby we can decrease oxygen requirement to the tissue second thing is increase blood supply to the ischemic region In ischemic region means if artery is get occluded blood will not flow to the distal parts okay so we have to dilate the artery and will deeply lead to cause more blood supply to the distal part so obviously patient will have the decreased pain so the drugs will which is decreasing the heart rate and which dilating arteries obviously will be beneficial in treating angina pectoris so what are those first we will see nitrates it is obviously vasodilatation so obviously decrease pain calcium channel blocker it reduce right heart rate heart contractions so it will be beneficial beta blockers reduce rate potassium channel openers vasodilator property reduce rate also then these two pfox inhibitors sodium channel blockers are recently developed okay it may have chance to ask questions these two groups will be recently developed molecules okay so each one we will discuss in following slides in nitrates will have gdn I, I, Uh, dinitrate mononitrates all these thing so we will discuss all those in following slides so first is nitrates in nitrates obviously what is the examples glycerol trinitrate isosorbate dinitrate isosorbate mononitrate which release nitrous oxide okay from endothelial cells by increasing cyclic gmp results vasodilation so blood supply will be increased thereby it will decrease preload okay which uh, which vessels will get dilated in nitrates mostly venous yeah, venules only so obviously leads to decrease preload when decrease preload 
obviously end dielastic pressure will be decrease okay when end dielastic pressure when diastolic pressure will be decrease obviously there will be more blood supply to the coronaries normally coronaries will get blood supply in the diastolic time only when decrease end dielastic pressure obviously it will enhance the more blood supply to the coronaries thereby it will be beneficial in chest pain so the major adverse effect of nitrates is it will have chance of developing coronary steel phenomena coronary steel phenomena means normally if one normally there will be three coronary arteries right if one coronary will get acclimated rest two are normally having more blood supply due to this using of nitrates what will happen the other two arteries also having more gushing of blood leads to coronary they will steal the blood okay that is called coronary steel phenomena so these drugs obviously they will avoid fast pass metabolism will give in sublingual dose okay uh, to avoid chest pain all those things so major side effect is tachycardia because of uh, decreased preload heart will have reflex tachycardia next flushing vasodilation property headache cyanide toxicity so to overcome cyanide toxicity we will give sodium thiosulfate next these drugs shouldn't combine with other vasodilatory drugs like sildenafil why means will the acetylene is phosphate diesterase enzyme inhibitor when you are inhibiting uh, when you are giving these drugs with other vasodilator obviously it will profuse vasodilation hypotension leads to death of the patient so we should avoid these drugs when comparing when you are uh, prescribing along with sildenafil okay so next is ccb ccb means calcium channel blockers these are effective for both classical and variant angina okay so obviously what are the drugs we will use virapamil liltiazem long acting dsp means dihydropyridine group it is third group in the calcium channel blocker in this we will have amlodipine sildenafil am am this one nifedipine nimodipine but nifedipine drug should be avoided in this patients why means these drugs will have chance of tachycardia when tachycardia is there obviously there will be requirement of oxygen will be increase so we have to be avoid nifedipine and one more side effect is hyperglycemia so we should avoid in diabetic patients also okay next is beta blockers beta blockers obviously they will reduce the heart rate so reduce cardiac work abrupt withdrawal may precipitate angina so those should be tapered down okay we should not stop immediately then these drugs are beneficial in decreasing mortality okay so this is they may have chance to ask which of the drugs among this will have decreased mortality means beta blocker because why means beta beta blockers will decrease the rate so thereby decreasing heart activity decreasing oxygen consumption so patient will have relief so it will have more chance of decreasing mortality main contraindication is variant angina why means variant angina is due to esophageal sinus sorry it's due to spasm vaso spasm okay so when you are giving beta blocker obviously it will have chance of vascular this one vascular contact will be decreased so there will be more chance of aggregating variant angina will be there so we should avoid beta blockers because beta blocker normally beta 2 will have vasodilation bronchodilation property right when you are giving blockers they will be have chancing of aggregating variant angina so we should avoid next is potassium channel openers potassium channel openers in this will have nicorandil they enhance vasodilation by releasing nitrous oxide next drug is trimetazidine ranolazine imabridine these three are recently newly approved fda drugs for angina pectoris okay first is trimetazidine it is inhibit lipid peroxidation and reduce generation of free radical injury thereby reducing uh, myocardial infraction size okay because in myocardial infraction what will happen lipid deposition will be there they will relevate so obviously free radical injury will be there so more tissue damage will be chance so we can prevent the tissue damage by giving trimetazidine okay second is ranolazine it blocks sodium and calcium channel okay so thereby reduce the heart rate but doesn't have effect on heart rate and bp but it will cause prolongation of qt so we should avoid qt prolongation drugs okay along with prescribing with qt prolongation drugs it is not effective for acute episodes mostly this ranolazine is approved in us fda for chronic angina pectoris patients only not acute episode cases only okay we have to prescribe this in chronic or repeated episodes patients in those patients only ranolazine is advisable 
Next is evaporidin. Evaporidin, this is recently asked MCQ. Evaporidin is act through sodium funny channel current channels. Okay. Evaporidin acts which channel? Sodium funny current channel. Mainly it is also known as bradycardia agent. It will reduce the heart rate thereby decrease oxygen congestion on heart. Okay. So main adverse effect is visible disturbances. This is also MCQ repeated. Okay. So here main thing is evaporating these blocks which channels sodium funny channels and ADR will be induced visual disturbance. This is AIMS related MCQ. Okay. Thank you.